Hi, welcome to uh, the second part of the tutorial which covers animation and collision. Uh, if you haven't watched the collision video I'd recommend watching it now. Um, you should ha be have this so far. If you don't, just go back. It's just a 10 minute video and it goes over simple rectangle collision. I also have another video, uh, simple, a simple animation video. I also recommend watching that because I'll be using some of the techniques that I used in that video to make our animation class. This will probably be two parts to this video because it might take longer than I think. I'll see how it goes. Uh, anyway, let's get started. Okay, so we have the game class which we used when we created our collision rectangles and what we draw to the screen there. But let's create the animation class. So, in fact, we've already got the project. So right click on your project and add a class uh, XNA Game Studio now we'll just do a simple C sharp class and let's call it animation now you'll need to add the using directors for XNA so you just get it from the game class just copy that paste over and use in there and Let's see. So, why do we need an animation class first of all? Well, uh, it's quite easy to create animations, but when you're handling lots of in, uh, of animations, you really do need a class. So that will be very easy and you can just reuse it for multiple animations. Um, I'm going to keep this one quite simple, but we will keep expanding on it over the tutorials and hopefully we should have some a really good animation manager which can be used for all different kinds of games and all different types of animations. Uh, so let's see uh, what should we do to get started so what does an animation need well it needs the actual animation so let's make that a texture 2d and we'll just call it the animation it will need a rectangle which will be the source rectangle and it will need a position vector 2 Now I'm assuming when people are going over these tutorials that's, that you already know quite a lot of C sharp. Just to go over it, these um, these are class level variables, and they I'm not declared a scope, public or private, because when uh, I don't declare it, it's automatically private. So it's only available to this class at the moment. We'll get access to these using properties, but I'll go over that in a minute. Um, let's see, uh, what else do we need? Uh, Right, we need to, we're going to be using timers, so we'll take a, f a float and have that record our elapsed time. That'll be useful for when we're calculating when to play the next frame. In fact, that's a good point. Let's have a good a frame time as well. So that will be used to decide how long each frame will last for. One second, two second, things like that. And we we'll need the number of frames. Uh, the current frame that we are on. Uh, let's see, these will be for helper kind of like methods later on. We'll have an in width and then height. Uh, frame width and height. That could be very useful for when we're doing collision detection later on. And if it's to loop or not. Uh, I think that's it for now. Um, can't think of anything else at the moment, but if anything else comes up while we go along, we'll just add extra variables. So let's do the constructor. So uh, what's this? This is the animation class. So I would want to load the textures in this class so that I don't fill up the game class too much. So to do that we'll need access to the content manager. So let's put the content manager as one of the properties here. Uh, we'll need the name of the asset, the, the picture. The, uh, we'll need, let's see, to take the speed of the frame, the number of frames, and 
whether it's to loop or not. Okay, so let's set these to the variables we just declared. So this dot frame time will be equal to the frame speed that's entered in the constructor when the object's created. Uh, by the way, this the, this keyword just points to this here, so it's you, so we know it's it's calling its own variable. This dot num of frames oops is equal to the num of frames. This dot looping is equal to looping. And we need to also load that animation texture. So this dot animation is equal to, and then we use that usual content dot load. Because remember, we've got access to the content manager now, so we can use this method. Uh, it's a texture to date, and it's going to have the name of the asset that's passed in here. So that we loaded here when the object's created. Uh, let's get the frame width and height of this of this um, asset. So to get that, we would use the animation's width and divide that by the number of frames. That would get us the individual frame width. Exact same thing for frame height. Get the animation texture's height, and we will get divide that by number of frames to get. Mind you, we actually don't really need that for R1. That would be helpful if the frames are, there's so many frames that it's not all on the one line. But anyway, so it's good to have. So position as well. Let's just set it to what we had in our last tutorial, 100, 100, wasn't it? Okay, and that should be the constructor for now. Um, so, so far what we've got is to set up our variables set up our constructor so that when the object is created these variables are filled with the information provided. So now we will actually want to play the animation. So let's create a method for that. So we'll make that public because we want that to be accessible by from the by the game class. No return type. Um just call it play animation, play anim. And we'll pass in the game time. We'll need this for the elapsed time. We'll use the game time built-in properties so that we can get an accurate accurate elapsed time. Do that now. So we'll have elapsed equal to the add on the game time dot elapsed game time dot total milliseconds. So every time that that will be an update method in the game class. So every time this method's something wrong there, I'll get that to that in a second. Every time this is called, it's going to add on to elapse the, the elapse game time uh, from the previous call, so that that will keep going up at a steady rate, so that each frame, it's always it's always the same. So what's it complaining about? Alright, this just requires a um, cast to a float, because it was expecting a double, but this is a float. Okay, um, let's see, so then we'll need our source rectangle to be updated. So that would be the current frame times frame width. We did this in our first kind of animation tutorial. It's just, it's just exactly the same things, just that we're putting it into a animation class instead of just in, in, in the game class so this can be reused. So again, I'll just quickly go over it. The um, this is the x coordinate, the y coordinate, the width, and the height. The x coordinate should always point um, at the current frame. And to get that, we just do a simple calculation of current frame times frame width. That way, we only draw the part we want to draw. Uh, it's always zero at the moment because we're always using a, a sprite sheet that has one line, so the height's always the same. And then the uh, frame width and frame height is okay so now we need to do the actual logic of playing the animation so what do we want to do when we want to play the next frame so we want to check if the elapsed time is greater than or equal to the frame time 
of the animation. So if the current frame is greater than or equal to the number of frames minus one, and let's check if it's also to loop. If it is, we'll reset it back to current frame equals zero. Else, we'll just else if we're not at the last frame, go to the next frame. And remember to set the elapsed time back to zero. Okay, and then all we need to do is draw it. Now we'll pass in a sprite batch object because when we call it in the game class we'll be using the sprite batch. Like here. Oops, wrong sprite batch. Now, uh, lots of overloaded methods for sprite batch. We'll be wanting the one with rectangle and a vector too. And we can probably do some cool things with them as well. Right, we'll use this one. This one's quite good. So for texture, we'll use the animation. For the position, we've got a variable called position. The rectangle is the source rect. Colors color dot white. Uh, rotation just put zero f in for now. Origin just, let's just put the top left. So new vector two zero zero. Uh, effects sprite effects dot none and layer depth one f. Okay. Okay. So that's our. Oh, what have I done wrong? Oh right, I think we forgot to put a scale, a scale in as well. One F there for scale. Yeah. Okay. So there's a scale that I missed out there. So remember to put that in if it's complaining. Okay. So I'll stop that video there because that's our animation class pretty much finished. Uh, we have our variables. We have our constructor that creates the animation texture from the asset name that we put in. We say what speed each frame is to be, the number of frames and whether it's to loop or not. This then plays when this is called, which we'll be doing in the next tutorial, adding this to the game. If this will play the frames of animation, it will check if it's to be looping or not. You know, it does all the logic there and this draws it. Okay, so we'll finish off that in the next tutorial. Okay, thank you.